Hello everyone, welcome to Cap Game Movie Show. Today we will be doing our Nerd Wars Part 2 Video Game Edition. Video Game Edition. Already ready. As you guys have... Well, maybe we should go through the rules again. Alright, uh, <laughs> right, for those of you who haven't seen our first Nerd Wars, I was comic book... Wait, it was comic books. Comic books. Let's go over the rules again. Well, first of all, it's, a, it's 11 questions, best out of 10. Best out of well, You know, but if you guys get enough... In 10, you guys, whoever has the most points wins. Yeah, whoever has the most points win. Well, it's in between yes and no answers, and some answers <coughs> are actual questions. I think we should I have to easy. say done, no matter what. Mark, I think it's easier that way. Is it? When I say done. As soon as he says done, that's when we snap. Then you do. Because that way it helps him out. Well, okay. All right, so we're going to start. First question. What is Mario's real job title? He didn't even wait. Oh! He still got it first. He, he might got it first, though, but fuck it. Okay. All right, do it again. Knee slap. I'm doing knee slap this time. That's really? hard. That's hard. All right. Wait till he's done. All right. What is Mario's real job title? Done. Oh, oh, man. Plumber. 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 Damn it. That's one for more. That's a fast enough. All right. This one is a little bit more open up. Okay. This one's a little more open up a question, so you might not have. Well, you can. Is it a debatable do. question? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can do it. It just goes first if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> Best open world game. All right. Best open world. Oh gosh. Well, well wait. All right. Just give me a minute to think. I gotta think. Well, Mark, you can tell me yours. I mean, you still go. You still get to um, debate for it. But you can tell me what your favorite open world game is. Oh, that's hard because I have a lot of. I like a lot of the open. World I have games. it. I have it. But Fallout Two. All right. Actually, well, I mean, look, can I put Fallout One and Two because they're both kind of in the same place, Sorry, sort so of. You confuse them. Yeah, I confuse. I'll, I'll fuse Fallout One and Two. I'm gonna fuse the two because they're both kind of similar in a way, so it's kind of hard to pick one or the other. All right. I'm gonna go with. Remember, you gotta be prepared to shoot down the other guys' um debate. I'm gonna go with The Witcher Three. All right. Oh crap! This is gonna I'm be a good one. I don't think I'm gonna win this one. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. All right, here we go. So, Far One and Two is all right. Let me just get this off the table. They're old games, yes, but old oh, games. They are <laughs> so. Big. They are extensive. They are big. There's so many locations. At least eight millibytes. <laughs> <laughs> They're so big. I mean, like this is the only Fallout game where you can drive a car <laughs> throughout the wasteland. And there's so many locations. There's army bases. There's broken cities. There's towns. There's all kinds of things. And then going from one to the other, there's vaults. It's like basically think of Fallout Three and Four if you fuse them together. And add in like about the mats from Point Lookout and Pit. That's how big these damn things are. They're probably even bigger than that. So anyway, they're so big. There's so much in them. And like even though it's a wasteland, there's a mixture between there being nothing in them and being a mix between something in them. It, 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 they've had that perfect balance between the two. And there's always things to do. There's always things to you know to go find. There's always and like, you always learn something new every day about the wasteland. You always go in it and go. I used to see an army camp that's been sitting there for like 200 years and that no one's ever seen before. And you go up to it and you go, well, how long the hell has this been here? And then like you go to an army base that's still unfunctional and then you're just like, whoa, this is really bizarre. <laughs> so anyway, there's so many cool locations. Cool locations, big open map. You can drive a car. I wish they'd bring that back, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Oh, and I will say one more thing about it. The open worlds, they're living, breathing. They are not stale. They're not static. They are living, breathing worlds. They they always change. All right, we're doing something new. When you go back, when when I come back to you, you have to talk about talk about the negatives and his. And when I come back to you, you have to talk about the negatives and his. All oh, right, so man. you tell me your positives. I can't do that with Witcher Three. Oh, Witcher Three. I can't. Damn it. The Witcher The Witcher Three, possibly the biggest open world I've ever seen in my life. There was so much to it took me three weeks to just do almost everything in this game. There were, the whole world just comes to life. The forests are beautiful. The animals, the creatures, everything in it are just so interesting. There's Roach, the horse. Of mm -hmm. course, I do. I would like if I was able to get another horse. Roach. I was. I would like if I was able to get more horses, but only one. If I all the quests for slaying monsters, for helping out people. There's just and there's just an infinite amount of things to do along with such an interactive story. There's all the swords, all the armor. Just so. That's literally all I can say. There's just so much and beautiful designs, beautiful graphics. The entire world of The Witcher is just so interesting, and I, it seems like there's a never-ending content in it. It's just very hard to beat. It's one game of the year as well. Yeah. 
I was waiting. So, I was so, actually so, waiting. Okay. So did Fallout. Yeah. Fallout yeah. Game hey, hey, it's true, too. All right. Where's the Fallout one? Are you done? Yeah. All right. Do it. Okay. God damn it. I guess I love this game. All right. Got to do it. Okay. I'll come up with something. Um... They are open world pretty big, yes, but they're split up into multiple districts. Fallout 1 and 2 was just one open world. It wasn't like, you know, you had this area, then that area, then that area, and they're all big. And then also, yeah, areas were space. But then, you know, levels were, and then, like, each section was cut off by level requirements. Like, you had to be a certain level, or else you die over and over again. That, that didn't happen in Fallout 1 and 2. You died if you weren't prepared. You didn't die if you weren't high level enough. You died if you were, like, if you were not prepared, you were going to die. Not because you were high level or not. That's pretty much all I got because I'm not <laughs> the game. All right. Negatives on his? Negatives. What years were your games made? Fallout 1 and 2. I was saying what uh, years? 1997, 1998. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. You can't. You can't. I don't know if you can use here. that because, you know, I'm this could be this. fun. You play, you play the original Mario games from 1985. You can't use that. Here's the thing. I'm not going to judge it on its age, but it was good for the time. It was good for the time. Oh, no. Oh no! Here's I just came up with another game that I could have easily here, defended. Here's the thing. Ah, here's the really thing. Too late. Here's the thing. It was good for its time, but compared to other games and all of that, I just feel like older they, games can be fun. I feel they like they can. They can. I just, I just right. feel the prospect of it playing a game in that time. At that time of what is in there, I feel there's going to be so little compared to what they're re they really could have done. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a lot in there for what they. Not gonna lie to you. It's, I, I gotta give it to Mark. Cause it's, it's even through no, it's not because it's not even because the time game like the game you pick. Two for two reasons really. One, you kept saying the same thing positives like over and over again about the game. Like you kept you said car driving like eight times. To, to be fair, I did yeah, not. To, you yeah, you I said it like twice, but you did. I mean, you did too. But but I think you gave me a little bit more about the the actual world. And you even kept saying even when you had to argue against you, you even kept saying I can't do it. It's hard because you that's not fair. But I mean, you got it too. Not you only it. that, you not, picked it. Not only that, but I mean, you it just picked it. Not only that, it's just one lump. It's not like divided. Like that's easily. that's the biggest problem with oh, sorry, that, I, I that, ru that, that, that ruins the realism of different regions. Mark gets the point there. Oh, damn it. All right, this one is a we gonna this isn't an open um this isn't a debate one right here. So get ready. Wait till I say done. What famous video game character is well known for these three words? Get over here. He didn't say done. Damn it. You was. But I just didn't say that before, though. <laughs> With famous video, game, video game Radio characters is well known for these three words. Get over here. I just said it's I just said it's I, 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 I done. We can't do it anymore. It's That's not fair. Habit. It's force habit. It's okay, force fine. Habit. I can't fine. handle that. Jeez. Force so habit. We both know the answer. <laughs> I know you both. That's just a speed thing. Okay, fine. What video game character is best known for these three words? Get over here. Seth get down first. Yeah, he did. Scorpion! You got that. Get over here. Ooh, that's iconic, too. Get over here. I know, right? That's why, uh... That's it. Best way... Okay, here we go. Debatable? Be no, no well, it is a debatable one, but if you, if you don't get it, you have to argue this one. So, it might you might not get the one you want. It's two. It's, it's only two questions of this. And, all right. Ready? Okay. Wait, is this debatable? It's debatable. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna realize that now. I see what you're doing. All right, better open world, best wasteland, borderline or Fallout. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was banging the heat. <laughs> oh, that's that's me racking around in your head forever. <laughs> oh god. Oh well, wait, which borderlands? Just in general, I think. Borderlands. Oh, general. Okay. Borderlands. So, Borderlands. 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 So, so the planet of Pandora versus the wastelands, the various wastelands of the United States. Oh damn. <laughs> well, peace, fuck. Well, no, I think I can. I think. Just pick one. I think I can defend Fallout on this one. I think I got a right, shot. You got Borderlands. I think I got a good shot. That's fair. I like Borderlands. All right. I think I got a good chance. All right. All right. So wait, wait, like, um, what do you mean? Like, who's the biggest? No, best. Just the best. 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 I think Fallout's the best, and here's why: is because Borderlands. It, Borderlands is restrictive, like Witcher, in a sense that regions and different places are restricted by a fast travel point. You know, you can literally go in every direction in Fallout. You can go in one direction and you'll find something cool, and you can go in another direction. The you can go in the opposite direction and find something cool. In Borderlands, there's strict linear paths, mostly. Not always, but strict linear paths that you have to follow with the occasional slight open, little open world. Slightly. 
and then Fallout, you get buildings to go into. I mean, you well, you get I mean, you buildings to go into. There's lore to find. There's like books to read. There's things you know. There's like cool monuments and um, iconic locations in the real United States that you can actually see in this uh, like alter universe United States that um, have Bethesda built. And um, there's and there's also it's just like the world itself. Like I said, it's living, breathing. Your actions have consequences. Like, people will know who you are if you screw something up, or if you did something good. Uh -huh. And then, you know, like, if you clear out a, a place, and you go back to it a few in-game days later, it will still be clear, but obviously, you know, for a game, that's, you know, the freaking, you know, cycle, whatever. But, and then also, I have to say this, the open world itself is so immersive. Like, you feel like you are in, like, post-war Boston, post-war DC, mm -hmm. post-war... Uh, West, post-war Vegas, you feel like you were there. And that's, I think, always the best thing in open world. Is like, if you could put yourself in this world, you've automatically nailed it. Ooh. So, I am... Borderlands now? Borderlands. The, the uh, planet of Pandora, which could literally be home to Deadpool, because good God, there's some... <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool fit in right he in. He did, right in. Oh, <laughs> love it. The, wor the world of... He'd be like, did I go to heaven? <laughs> Borderlands is very, is very, it's more, it's an action series, but it's also very much a comedy because, first of all, it's much, first of all, there's very similarities with Fallout in terms, mm -hmm. in terms of there are certain people that go out around this deserted world. It's not deserted, but there are factions. There's your psychos. There's, a, there's the more militarized people. There's all sorts of things that go on in Borderlands, and there's several crates hidden around bases all over the, all over the entire game. You just find it's all the various drops. Some mm -hmm. are good. Some are bad. The, the more and more good stuff you find, the more and more the, the more and more skills you unlock. It just it all really just comes together in one piece of the puzzle that is making your character because you have four choices. You can you choose from four different types of characters in each game, and say you want to be a gunzerker, go with the gunzerker, unlock the skills. You just go around roll, rolling through that, mowing people down, just destroying everything. Cool. You go as zero. You just go around slicing everybody, commando, throw out a turret, just hold yourself off while you're battling. There's so so. And there's a few more choices I haven't played in a while, so I actually can't remember. Plus, there's a lot of memorable characters in Borderlands, like Handsome Jack, Claptrap, all these kinds of people that you just do not forget. Yeah, man. I mean, Minion, it's so nice to see you. Or, or Butt Stallion. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can. I can. I can you, you know, hold on. Before you mean to me, I'm not going to lie. I was so leaning towards Seth, and then you said the memorable characters. and I was No, like, there's memorable characters. There involved. is memorable, but... Compared to memorable and Borderlands, it's a comedy. Right, right, you can't compare that to you. Can't like him better. Right, give you your right, own. My ideas. my disargument would be this: is that um, the char I'm sorry, the characters. You can literally be what you want to be in Fallout. You don't have to pick between no. four classes. Okay, and that's like freaking. That like that's like. I don't have a good game comparison, but that's really like old school gaming. Mm -hmm. And even in the early Fallout, you could like pick. You could choose who you wanted to be. You did not have a set. Class, you didn't have a set anything. You could be who you wanted. You could be you in the game. You could be yourself if you wanted to. That was a complete option. You didn't have... And also, the memorable characters. There's a lot of memorable characters. There's President Richards from the second game. There is the first Overseer Vault 13. There is, in Fallout 3. I'm going to go to Fallout 3 now. There's Asher from um, from the pit. There are the aliens... I mean, there's not one memorable character, but there's so many memorable... That's a memorable race. And there's, and there's factions, too. There's the Aliens. There's the Enclave. There's the Brotherhood. There's the New California Republic. There's Caesar's Legion. There's the Followers of the Apocalypse. There's, there's the Crimson Caravan. Uh -huh. There are the Institute. The, what, the Railroad. The Minutemen. There's so many different factions. And like in each game, you could pick and choose who you wanted to be. If you felt that the Legion was the right way to go, you could pick it. Uh -huh. You didn't have to, a strict linear path as as a vault hunter, you know, to just find the vault. You could literally say, all right, I like the way that Caesar's going. I want to be on their side. I want to help them. And that's not, you know, saying that you have to do it. That's a complete, like, that's a complete choice. Yeah. That is a complete choice. And, and I will, all right, the comedy part aside, this game is has dark moments. It's got really heart-wrenching moments. And it's even got some funny moments because... Seth? So, yeah, you're supposed to be talking about negatives about his. You're still talking about your own game. But I'm getting to that point. Okay, well, you take it a while to get in there. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, point being is that this world, point being, I'm just going to get straight to the point because I think I've really made my point already. Yeah, I mean, you I made think a I, positive point. I got you. And then, so I think 
the reason why I think his is uh, not his, I should say his Borderlands and Fallout. There's no comparison because, like I said, you're you feel like you're in these wastelands. You can be your own character, All right. and in Borderlands you can't. You're you're you are set on a path, and you are set to one character of four choices. That's it. Given the sequels to Fallout and the sequels to Borderlands, I feel like Fallout did reach its next level of uh, its next level of engine when it got to Fallout 3. But after that, with the with recent adversary Fallout 4, they basically just recycled the same engine. Whereas Borderlands keeps its comic look, but it does amp it up just a little bit. Not only that, I mean you have power armor in Fallout, but you can't drive any vehicles like you can in Borderlands. Yeah, you can. Fallout 1 and 2. That's they're they're all part of the same. Yes, but in Borderlands, you've always been able to drive vehicles. That was never just initiated. So, hmm. I just feel like having the vehicle allows you more to explore the desert. And, and the size, the vehicle, yeah. the vehicle was optional. Just, yeah. uh, just not just saying that the vehicle was optional. Plus, I mean, Fallout, Fallout. I feel like the plot has never really changed. I feel like it's always been kind of recycled over and over again. Whereas Fall, whereas Borderlands, I mean, you have a different person. <laughs> trying to stop. You have a different person trying to stop every time, but it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a old it's an old kind of plot, but mm -hmm. at least they're changing it up. Whereas I feel like with Fallout, it's just kind of slapping you in the face over and over again. Fallout. What? What? <laughs> Borderlands one and two is the same thing. You stop the ball enemy and you stop Handsome Jack. It's the I, same I, thing. Yeah, uh, but they switched it up. Okay, they just switched it out. Mm -hmm. You done? Well. I'm having a hard time with this one, specifically because I think you guys both made great points. I think, Seb, you're right about the whole, you know, you being able to make your own decisions and do whatever you want and do different things in this universe. And I actually do think, because for one, Handsome Jack is actually on the top ten best villains list. So, Stallion. so you know, it's hard to say he's in, and even on that, um, Tina, um... Tina, yeah, she's trap. she's on one of the, like claptrap. So they're so it's hard to say that they don't have a little bit more. I think Borderlands actually does have more memorable characters. I think Fallout has their fractions and stuff. That's no doubt, and they got better fractions. But Borderlands, like the characters, kind of stick out of my mind more. You claptrap. You can give it to Mark as the characters. No, I'm actually giving it to you because I think that you could do more in that wasteland and that waste. And, and, and you gave me more why that wasteland was better. Well, the actual wasteland, and you kind of gave me a little bit more about the characters and stuff, and like the web, and different things. But I think Seth gave me more about the wasteland itself. By being in that wasteland, was better. See, don't say stuff. You see, but, you know, know, but I'm gonna, the way you were talking, so you didn't give it to because me. it was difficult. <laughs> I can't, I can't say that you were wrong about a couple points and still give you the question. So it's a tie. It is. Yeah. Last question. Yeah, we got tied in points. Yeah, I'm sure you got. Mark's got two. You got two. Next question, which <laughs> is this a debatable one again? Uh, yeah, but it's it's a two it's a two one like um like the other one like um like the last one we just did. Better princess. Oh, damn it. Peach. Oh, or Zelda. Zelda. Oh, you're gonna give me a choice. Okay, Peach or Zelda. I already know. I'm picking. Ah, I figured out your trick. Shit, you're picking. I'm gonna go with Princess Peach. Okay. Oh yes, <laughs> I was gonna pick Zelda anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. Why Princess Peach? Better Princess. I just feel like Zelda is iconic, yes, but Princess Peach, that is the real OG princess yeah. <laughs> of video games. I mean, think about it. When you put first turn on that Super Nintendo, who do you think you're going to go save? Princess Zelda? No. You're going to go save Princess Peach. Not only that, she has been so many cameos in every single thing of Nintendo. I mean, she has that classic damsel in distress feel to her, whereas with Zelda, she can fight back, yes, which I respect. But I just feel the term of a princess is supposed to be dainty, light, like, you know, just that nice presentation. That's what Peach fits. You're talking about making cupcakes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas Zelda is more like a warrior princess, I feel. That's what I love about her. <laughs> yes, but I mean, with I Peach, I just feel like she fits the role of a princess much more, whereas yours is more like a knight. You done? Yes. Okay, tell me this. Why can't a princess be a knight? Why can't a princess be a warrior? Because that's the thing. She's a princess. She has, she's, she's going to inherit the throne. She's going to be the next monarch of, of their country. She is the daughter of Daphnis Nohansen Hyrule. She is charged when he dies. She is, she's going to be the queen. Even though that hasn't happened yet. That still hasn't happened. But still, the point is that the royal succession is there. Why? And here's Princess Peach. What the hell is she the queen of or princess of? Who's the ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom? Like She is. She's the queen. And if Bowser is able to easily overrun the Mushroom Kingdom, Zelda can at least hold her own and be like, listen, when I'm the queen, 
I am going to defend my country. Is that this a win or She's not Shanks. Or Sheik's how you pronounce his name. Sheik. That Sheik. is weird. <laughs> she turned into a dude. Well, I thought it was a dude. I played Smash Bros. That's, that's, like, that's not a dude. She's not, not a dude. Play anyway, dude. So anyway, now here's the thing. Would you want a princess that just had that like that has an enemy that overruns your kingdom every time, or have a princess that can actually fight your enemy? That's a weird. And one. actually feels safe. That's a weird kingdom. one because they both have that one enemy that's always threatening them. With, yeah. Um, yeah. Zelda has Ganon. Yeah, Ganon and, and, and um Peach and Peach has Bowser. Bowser. So they both have that. Zelda enemy. can hold her own. She can hold her own in defending her country, even though that you know every now and again with every game. I mean, like games. All the Zelda games have fluctuated between Ganon taking over the country completely. Because of some reason, or he only got halfway through it before Zelda and Link, you know, your character actually stopped him from doing it. Mm -hmm. So it always fluctuated between the two. And in my opinion, I think I like the ones that fluctuated between um, him having gotten halfway done, but not wholly, because that's what they think. Zelda, you know, that's one thing I love her. She's a warrior, she's a knight, she's beautiful. Gosh, she's beautiful. I'm Especially in the Smash Bros. 3D, which they actually finally made her a character, and then that pixelated, and which then she was she, old school. And then when she becomes her alter ego, she's handsome. Confession. For the longest time, I thought your main character in Zelda was... That's what Zelda that was, was That was going to be my biggest negative <laughs> argument. That was going to be my biggest one. At least people know Peach is Peach. So people know Zelda. Zelda, too. Anyone who... No. Even, uh, you saw a picture of Zelda. Someone, that is someone, someone who has never played Mario will still know that Peach is Princess Peach. You can't make that argument. That's not fair. That is actually... That you is can't be this thing. That is actually a good point. That like I, I hate to say it. It is a good point. So There are so many people who still don't know that Zelda is not... Listen, Link. like, I'm playing, I'm playing Legend of Zelda. God, I love playing as Zelda with his sword and shield. That is what they say. There's YouTubers who do that now. That's stupid because it's not. It's obvious as shit. Yeah, those people are dumb. There are, you two are giving. This is actually. I'm not gonna lie. This one is harder even than the Borderlands one to me because they're so like. Because he's got the he's got the whole origin factory, but you got the whole she's a warrior thing, and then I think I have to disqualify the whole. You know, she can because they both call upon Mario and Link to come save their asses. And all they the still time, don't so, get none other one. And they still don't get none. So it's like they still. But they have so many similarities. Oh, man. Oh, God. Legend of Zelda is a refurbished version of Mario. Oh, God. What? Actually, not you gotta think. Well, I mean, that Zelda came out before Mario. Did it? Mm, yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah, it did. So. No, it didn't. The like first that. Legend of Zelda? Yeah, it did. Before yeah. Super Mario? I think so. No, man. I don't know. It came out after. Came out the, I'm pretty sure it we'll did. We'll Google it later on. Google it later, but... Man. Warrior Princess Original G... Hmm... Know her name from its. Yeah. I'm gonna give it to Peach. Ooh, the last little bit about people not really knowing her just kind of pushed me. I was leaning on you because because what all you said, but then I was like, that is so fucking true. There's so many people who still don't know that. That's, that's what I was saying because it was so obvious. Zelda's a good people are dumbass. Zelda's a good character, but it's just the fact that anyone who's never played Zelda won't. Why are you gonna base the argument off of the people that people don't know her? No, it's, it's not the fact. fact. It's just the fact that but she's not a better princess. Known. No, no, it was just the last little nudge thing that, that, that made me put. But princess, a princess is, <clears throat> in, in video games, can be a whole bunch of different things. It can be popular. It can be, I told you, I was leaning in your direction. But that little I bit. Mean, you said better princess, not better known princess. Better known princess. But it doesn't matter. That's a part of it. Better known princess. Better known princess, yes. But she's not a known princess. Well, that's better known princess. 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 Better known the only thing that was leading me in your direction was that she was a warrior and whatnot. But Here's then I was like, argument. well, who even... That's the people even know she's that. Here's another argument. If Zelda can fight, why does she need Link? Because, like I said, the way it's, it's over. between it's over. and completely taking over it's and over. not taking it's over. over. It's over. It's over. Let it go. We're moving on. Next question. Next. And that's just a piece of the track for us. So we can Next question. This is a quick one, so you better get the hands ready. What is the name of your son in... Fallout 4. Uh, Sean. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played Fallout 4. It's been a while since I played that. Sort of like Type 3. What he said at the beginning. They yeah, were Type 3 3 now. Oh, what the fuck? Alright. Oh, no. You got Type 4 4. Oh, 4 4. Really? We're almost done, man. Sure. Alright, this is the debatable one. This is a debatable one. <clears throat> debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Best first person shooter. <laughs> oh damn it! Yep, best first-person shooter. You know what? I'm gonna give it to the Gold Knight series. What? Like, but it's only one. What? Only one Gold Knight? 
No, there's been a ton of them. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm thinking about it now. Best first person. You say Call of Duty. I'm leaving this I'm going right to give it to Halo. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> the whole series? The whole series. I uh, Call of Duty is a strict second, but I just feel like Halo is more personal to me. Okay, okay. okay. Alright. I'm going to say this. Oh, one, of, one of two ways of approaching this is also, I'm not going to say, all right, you say the best. I'm not going to bring up who's older and who's not, so I'm going to leave that out of the tail. Because I was going to say that, you know, the James Bond series has been around way longer than the Halo series. If you want to argue, you can. No, I know, but I, I wouldn't think that's fair. Because I'm just trying to think of the two games as a whole. And this is the thing. When you play, all right, I'm going to start. I like James the remastered Bond. Gold now. I'll give you that. I like the remastered one. James Bond, he's, he's charismatic. Mm -hmm. He's a super spy. Licensed to kill. And it, no nonsense gets the job done. And fuck all the women. Yeah. And fuck all the women. <laughs> and here's the thing. Every single GoldenEye story was different. Every one of them had a different villain, had a different plot, and had a different twist. None of them were the same. Halo has the same, almost has the same story every damn game. They're fi either they're fighting the government, the cover covenant, the covenant, yeah, yeah, covenant, yeah, 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 covenant, or the Prometheans, no, no. or both, as in the fifth game, they're fighting both. <laughs> and it's it, like Goldeneye's changed every single time. Different guns, except for the Golden Gun, that hasn't changed, which is awesome. That's iconic. The Golden Gun, the only thing that hasn't changed, but all the other guns have changed. The, the story has changed. Mm -hmm. The character of James Bond has changed over the years because it went from a simple character in the early games to evolving into this charismatic, no nonsense, license to kill, fuck all the women, charming person. Yeah. That's the thing, because he's a spy. He's not a soldier. He's a spy. But in the same time, he had the soldier premise of, like, listen, i got to get the job done kind of thing. So he has, like, that mix between the two that he fluctuates between. It's because he's a spy when he needs to be, but he's a soldier when he needs to be. So, like, he always has, like, a switch. He's just, like, because, you know, with Chief, he's just a soldier. That's all he is. Okay. So... we got more? Wait, I'm trying to think. Um, like I said, like, I'm not going to use the H thing, because that's not really fair, because, like, oh, James Bond's older. That's not fair. So, um, that, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. What gamer in their right mind does not know that theme? Oh. When you hear that, you know Halo. No, wait, we're not going for the best game. We're going for the best hey, game. We're not going hey, for best game. Well, What's that? Argument. Well, Seth, actually, I could even point out that I said best first-person shooter, and you talk more about the character than the actual shooter and the things in the shooter game. But that's the whole game. <laughs> let's, let's let him have that. Let him have that. Okay. I'm going to say this. Master Chief. John has been around ever since the original Xbox release. The first person shooter is simple. You can't really call it a best game. It's so simple. Why did that make it? Sorry. Sorry. This, ga this game blew up. Halo was all over the place. Everyone loved Master Chief. He was the OG. Everyone loved him. Yeah. We move into Halo 2. That one guitar everyone knows. You rock out to it when you're playing the game. Shooting assault rifles. Shooting SMGs. Rocket launchers. Shotguns. Against the, against the Alien Covenant. Just keeps trying to stop you. You're trying to stop the Prophets and their plans. You stop the Halo Reef the first time. Turns out they got another set. But then we move into Halo 3. Where, where we have... Some of the Arbiter's race joining in, helping the co helping the Master Chief fight. We then move in Halo 4. Basically, this we've all been waiting so long. We had Reach, which was the best Halo story ever, almost considering you have to be in the game. You emerge, you create your own character, immerse yourself into the Halo universe. The shooting system has always been so smooth; it was increased on Reach. They kind of changed it to a Call of Duty style in Halo 4 and 5. But I feel like that classic Halo feel was still there. I always enjoy the multiplayer. Of course, sometimes you know, uh, the team baggers. It's always a problem. They did Halo freaking invent that thing? But not only that, with the I, team bagging thing. I feel like the weapons in Halo are also just so iconic to the series. I just feel everything I, from the needler to the rock to the gravity hammer. I just feel like for a first-person shooter, it has so much to offer besides guns. Like there's the energy sword. There's the gravity hammer. Uh, I there, there's the flamethrower. There's just so much that goes into this first-person shooter that makes it so different from others. Like I just feel like <laughs> it's different from others. <laughs> okay. Not only that, but with what did you choose again? James. Double O Seven. Not only that, Double O Seven does have that classic feel. I like the remastered one, but I just feel like Halo just adds so much emphasis each game to different features from new armor abilities that came in Halo Reach. What? The other <laughs> It's the same damn game! Over and over! That's like saying Mario is the same damn game over and over. He's a plumber. He is. Alright! And it is. Okay. One thing they add are new power-ups. Sort of. Alright, 
So wait, is this a, like do I have to argue against it? Or and I, did and did Goldeneye ever go MLG? Did they ever make it to the pro leagues? What do you mean by pro leagues? Halo was Halo was a pro league game for a while. People were yeah, Double Seven has made game of the year before. Yeah, but this game, this time, game, people, three, this game, times. people competitively. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not you can do that in the older games too. You play multiplayer in the older games. games. I'm not gonna fight you. Like Mark One, he talked more about what the actual shooter, and you just didn't. You're kind of just te the kind of just like you're not even really like into it. And plus, you really didn't even say anything about the actual shooting in the game. Any of the guns, anything. It's a first person shooter. And Halo, and uh, but one he even said something about Master Chief. Master Chief is one of the most iconic. He has a fucking statue in this. <laughs> I'm finishing this fight. Like, it's, I mean, eh, it's just really not even, it wasn't really a fair debate. You're just going with, like, the most well-known thing. No, it's not the most well-known thing. It's actually better. <laughs> you just don't like it. Like, you can't just not like it. We already right, tell you you're well, a hipster. Well known. Shut up. That's not what a hipster is. You hate everything that's mainstream. That's not what a hipster is. I don't know you're saying that. Hey. Yeah, pick it up. Tie it again. Tie it again. All right, here we go. The second, last question, second to last question. It's second to last question. Debatable or... Hmm. I'm trying to debate if I want to give you another debatable or another clap one, but I'm going to just give you another um, clap in, um, one. What is your main hero's last name in Mass Effect? Shepard. Shepard. <laughs> Mark is up two, by the way. No, he's up one. Hmm. <laughs> This might end in a tie. Maybe. Okay, this one is a debatable one, but this one is kind of an open one, so you don't really have to, you know. Best, um, this one's kind of be a weird one, and it has to be. I know you're a PC guy, but you gotta drop it for right now. Best gaming console. Oh, oh my god. Damn it, why, dude, why, why, why? Can, why can't I pick PC? Because That is a gaming console. I don't care. It technically it is. is. I mean, if you want... But I can argue for keeps... days on the PC. Because what I want to see, console? because I want to bring you down to my level and see you argue for another damn console. That's right, it's honestly damn the thing. it. I choose the Xbox. I Original know. Xbox? Xbox One. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. Shit. Fucking hell, man. You had a PS4? You know, I might just give you this point, because I can't argue with enough the PS4. I can't, because this I mean, is like, yeah, I don't do something. You just think the PC it. is the best console all around. You can't even muster up some good things to say about something. I just hate <laughs> you it's because you couldn't muster up even, like, to take it seriously, because you just hate to say it. The console, <laughs> it's just like, it's just PC. Well, as soon as I discovered PC, I found out how better they were than consoles. Wait, you don't even have to believe what the hell are you saying? <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I mean, come on! Like, I would if I'm up, you I know what, I'm gonna, if I was in your position, I would have set the PlayStation Two because I played so many different games on the awful. PlayStation Two. I played, and I'm right, 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 right. I'll pick the Super Nintendo. Okay. Because that is my most memorable. Okay. One, and I had the most experience playing as a kid, and I still play to this day. Memory wise, I would choose the N64, but just in terms of what console I've loved the most overall, I'm gonna go with my Xbox One. All right. So, you guys didn't even. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did that uh, the first time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what, guys? I'm just gonna go off limb and say this. I'm just gonna bullshit this one. I'm just gonna come up with anything I like, and no matter what it is. And you can't say, "Oh, well, it's just about the console or anything like that." I don't care. Oh no, I've right, been spoiled by the PC. The PC. I'm just gonna say this off the bat. I will always defend the PC because it is the best console of all time. Ha period, hands down. So that out of the way, I'm gonna defend the Super Nintendo. All right. The Super Nintendo. For our generation, and even the generation that just came before us, were the most memorable. We as kids remember playing the old consoles. We remember playing the old games. And you got to think about this. All of the games we see today, most of them, not all of them, but most are of them. Are indeed inspired by but Are inspired by games that came out in this one. Like, That's true. For example, the Super Nintendo it, like, introduced us to the RPG series, like uh, like Legend of Zelda and uh, Earthbound. Earthbound was such a great RPG. And also, the Star Fox was introduced there. And uh, Mario, well, it did get a start with Super Nintendo. All your classic now, game characters. All, it's like, it has such a classic feel that we all know and love today. And this is where it got started. This is the grandfather. Or not the grandfather, grandfather, but this is like the, like one of the, like the, you know, the forefathers of all modern day gaming. It's like every gaming achievement has been traced back to the Super Nintendo and the NES. It's mm -hmm. always been traced back to it. Oh, man, that's true. 
And, and like I said, it's got a classic feel, you know, for us growing up as kids. Because I remember, like, it was like, it's what got me into games. It's what got a lot of our generation into games. Was the early systems, like the Super Nintendo. It's what got us into gaming in the first place. And got us hooked. Right? Yeah, and got us hooked enough to keep with it for so many years. Because I know some people that play the Super Nintendo said, oh, I'm a video game, just stupid. I'd rather do something else. And then they never play the console again. For us, you know, we play the old systems and we're like, man, this is so awesome. We want to keep going with it. Mm-hmm. So and that's, you see that's how far it's evolved. And you see how far it's evolved. So right. that's my argument. And I agree very much. The, the Nintendo was a big stepping stone for video games. But if you ask me who has really turned a console into more than just a console, it's the Xbox One. The Nintendo brought us up. But I feel like the Xbox, no, no offense to all PlayStation players, I feel like the Xbox just stepped into that next realm of but more. Than I mean, sales, I like it better than sales the tell the tales. Yes, but the, tell the yes, but with this, I can do more than just game. I can game; it's beautiful. But I can also do so much more. I can go on Netflix. I can Skype. I can do. do I can go on the internet. I can do, do several, sport, several, several upon things with this one box. I don't even need a cable box. I can just put a cable wire to this much TV. You do that with PS4 too. I didn't even do that with PS4. Did you know that? I don't know. I, I, all I know is a lot of a lot of this also this also has a DVR built into it. You can record stuff without having to buy a box. A lot of people, from what I've seen, and like, well, like, and people say that the um, PC, like, is more for, you know, I mean, no, the um, Xbox, the um, PlayStation 4 is more for, like, if you're, like, by yourself playing, like, you know, certain specific mm-hmm. games, and the Xbox One is for something different. Like, a lot of people say that, but I, I mean, not only this, but just, I'm holding my bias because I have an Xbox One, so I'm holding my bias. Not, <laughs> not only this, but also saying the fact that not only. It's just the fact that the Xbox just, it has such a place in my heart because the 360 won me over so long ago, and when I got the one, I... And then, and then came the Kinect. The one was, okay, the Kinect, that, the first one was that bad. Was the second one is such a big improvement, though. Like, I'll Not say this. really. I mean... Have you seen the Kinect games Can, for can, can you walk into our room and say PlayStation on? No, t- Xbox on. I mean, I still think the best motion, I, I still think the best games that, like, motion-based are was the first the, Wii that came out. Uh, the, uh, X, the Xbox... It launched so much of next gen gaming, like especially with hate. Hey, it got Halo, Gears of War, which is a graphically big phenomenon in gaming. There was also what, there's also been many other Halo things game. on it. I mean, I just feel the Xbox deserves that high place as one of the best consoles ever made. Old school versus new school. <laughs> the original versus give it to Mark because I know what actually, you're do. Well, actually, I was going to give it to you. Because I think he made you're gonna give it to Mark. Just do it. I mean, he made it to you. He said he's gonna give it to you. Because uh, because I think you actually tried for one. You actually did give it an effort, you know. Because I mean, sometimes you act like a child and get all pouty and just you do and just be like whatever. But when you try, you win. You you did this last time. You got all pouty and then you won and then you had that shock look on your face. (laughs) Did I win? But you get this question answer this question. But Mark's still ahead. It's five to four, actually. So Mark, so I mean, it's not totally over. But if you don't get this next question, it's he wins. But like, okay. But you get the. I'll, I'll give you this one because I think you made good points about you know the history behind it, the stepping stone that it was a big step for video game industry. Period. Like one small step. Like I like the one. Xbox One. It's you know I have an Xbox One, but like consider compare. Like, I think the importancy of you know. Yeah, that and also, I'm like, when you're really old, you're gonna remember. You know, you're not gonna. I mean, you're gonna remember what started it. Well, gaming for you is gonna be one of the old systems. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you're always gonna say, "This is where I got my start." I didn't get the. I didn't get my start from this. I didn't get my start from my PC. I didn't get my start from that. I got my start from the Super Nintendo. All right, make or break question for you, Seth. If Mark gets it right, he wins. If you get it right, it's a tie, and we have no time. Is the Bay or is it like a kind of just. You know what? Maybe I should do it on a debate so that way it's a little bit more fair. Well, fair. All right. Sounds good. Best video game trilogy. Oh. Damn it. Oh, I already know what I'm going with this. You're going to say Mass Effect, aren't you? No. Really? No, it's. <laughs> no, it's I don't know. Mm. So many games floating out there. You're going to say Gears of War, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Damn, dude. I'm going to win. Yay! Yay! What are you picking? I'm just kidding. I'm such a big Gears of War. I'm such a big Gears of War. Mass Effect. Okay. See who goes first. All right. Damn it. Gears of War. The Ge- Gears of War launched 2006. Huge phenomenal hit with Marcus Phoenix oh, and the rest of... <laughs> I remember that. Huge phenomenal hit with Marcus Phoenix and Delta Squad fighting the Locust Horde with General Rom. Multiplayer takes off. Everyone's having a great-ass time. Come around 2008, 2009, 
we get the announcement, Gears of War 2. Everyone's going. Everyone's just losing it. We then see one of the most pivotal, most influential moments in Gears, the speech at the beginning of Gears of War 2 that influenced all of us to get through the story, move on to multiplayer, and keep fighting for humankind. The story was so pivotal, and, and then we moved, the story was so pivotal with the defeat of General Rom, then the learning of Queen Mira. We never wanted to stop playing with Delta Squad. We always wanted to figure out what was going to happen next. We always wanted to continue the fight for humanity in this, to save Sierra and to speak the Locust Horde. Come in Gears 3. Humanity is, ha is having trouble. Our cities are gone after the sinking of Jacinto in Gears 2. We are now mo we are now living on ships, just fighting to the last man to save ourselves from any destruction. Even though we kind of killed ourselves at the same time. Hey, man, hold on. You can do it. Okay. I mean, you can, you got we, mo we move on. Marcus, Fe Marcus Phoenix, we found out his father, Adam Phoenix, didn't actually die in the accident years ago. He's been building a device that could save the entire human race. We're fighting our way through. We lose our most one of our most beloved characters, Don Santiago, which is a death that almost made me cry. That was sad as fuck. You know, I just shrugged. I was looking at it. And, th and then we move into it. We have all these good characters, such memorable characters in all of it. And that's what's got going off. Oh, God, really? <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Who the hell you're talking to, Mark? <laughs> some, some of my friends. But it's 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 that There you go. But anyway, moving on. Uh, we have all these memorable characters from the, everyone in the squad: Anya Strad, Colonel Hoffman. It's everybody. I can keep going on and oh. on with all the memorable villains, all the memorable heroes. I just want to give Gears of War just that place it deserved in pivotal gaming history. I'll give it a place it does deserve in pivotal gaming history. Repetitive as fuck. <laughs> you say that about every game. No, it doesn't. It's the same thing. Same thing. So Mass Effect. No, it's Mass not. Effect. Mass mm. Effect is actually a ball. Mm. Evolved every single game. I don't know. If I it was that. different in story. The only thing that hasn't changed about it was the main villain, the Reapers. But Saren was such an iconic villain. You wanted to stop him. The combat has changed. Each wow. game it was Hell, different the game than the last. The controls changed. The controls changed. Yeah. Everything it evolved. Here's the one never evolved. And then like the whole thing with fighting for humanity. Humanity fucked themselves over. Like why would I fight for me when I know that we fucked ourselves over? We did as a last resort. There was nothing else we could have done. No, that was before the Locust team came. We fucked ourselves up. We were fighting. We amongst each other because you know why? Because we need we need because we're we humans. We need like, at least in Mass Effect, when they fought, it was for a purpose. They fought because they had. Like, it was either fight or you go extinct. That's the same thing in Gears. They fucked themselves <laughs> over though. They did that to themselves. So after the Locust Horde came out, <laughs> they did that to themselves. Period. The end. But the stories, memorable characters: Garrus, Bakarian, oh, yeah. Liara to Sony, <laughs> Liara to Sony, more than Solus. Erdnot Rex, <laughs> my favorite, my homeboy, Erdnot Rex, er Grunt. Well, now it's Erdnot Grunt because he got a part of the clan. Erdnot Grunt. Um. Tally, Tally Zora, Vos Normandy. That was really kind of sad. Though, I forgot to mention something. Baird and the Colt Train. I was looking for that, but keep going, keep going. Anyway, the, there's Miranda and Jacob. There is, there's so many memorable characters in that one, too. Even characters you don't even really play with are memorable. Like, um, like uh, Anderson. Mm -hmm. Big, big time. Um, you get Anderson, you get the Council. You know, they're memorable characters. You don't even fight with them. You know, Similar you play to all the car mines. What? <laughs> yeah, they're memorable. No, and then and then also the, the sci-fi fantasy of this world, of how the politics work, how the gameplay feels. Like, like with Gears of War, you're just on the straight, linear path. You now you just worm your way through. Mass Effect 1, you had choices to make. You could pick where you went first. And where you went first affected the speed of the story. If you went a certain way, it went slower. If you affected another way, it went faster. And I have to also say one more thing. Do you remember? Remember? Rem no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to say, we're about to go on to be right yeah, now. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, but, you know, Mass Effect 3 changed the gameplay entirely completely. Now, if you yeah. sing, no, I'm not gonna, no, no, you can't, I'm not, don't, don't count this. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm don't not. Don't buy us towards the ending. I'm, I'm talking about the it. gameplay. I'm not talking about, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about anything else. But you see in Mass Effect 3 how the the Reapers are winning, mm -hmm. the galaxy is getting consumed, and you see it slower and slower, and it's getting consumed. And you have to fight, you're fighting against everything. More than, more than dying. 
More that you can that's an iconic tattoo. That almost made me cry when Morden died because I think he was much better character than Dom. Not, both of those deaths, Dom's and Morden, made it on a top ten list. For, for yeah, it was like Morden's death so was really like and Morden made it in top five. So I mean, and all the cool, cool DLCs that they've come up with, all like you know, you get to explore new places, you get to find new places. Even the party DLC was fun because you had a, your own party inside. Well, not really Shepard's house, but it was Anderson's house, and everything. Like I said, everything evolved with every game. Gears of War barely evolved. The only thing it, it didn't even evolve. I'm not even gonna say story because it didn't even involve evolve story. Didn't evolve story. Didn't evolve combat. The only and not even characters. The characters were the same. Everything was the same. Get that down. The characters were the same. Story was the same. Gameplay was the same. The only thing that really ever changed was how humanity fucked themselves each time over. Humanity fucked themselves in the first game. They fucked themselves in the second game. They fucked themselves in the third game. Well, oh, humanity fucked themselves in everything. Just, and then the fourth game. Time. The fourth game. What's the fourth game going to be about? It's like, what more is there? No, I got the magazine right there. Explain it all if you want to see it. I'll, I'll, I'll it sounds, it's wait. And it sounds fantastic. Didn't, you get, it? didn't you get pissed off they didn't talk about it? Or was that Mass Effect? That was Mass Effect. That was Mass Effect 4. Yeah. And, and then Andromeda. also now we have Mass Effect Andromeda coming out, which is going to take another big change. It's going to add so much other big changes yeah. to the whole franchise. And Same facility. years four, dude. What's it, what's it going to add that's know. different than the other three? I want you to tell me. What is it? Yeah, I can't remember right off the bat. I want to know because I want to know what it will change that that we haven't seen. It's actually, a bit, it, like it's the mainly the gears. It's always a storyal pivotal point because with the sto- think about it, gears multiplayer, it's all right. But when it comes to the story of Gears of War, it's just so in depth. You grow so attached to all the characters. Not only that, Gears of War three, they voted on what would happen to the last car mine. You know, a series is popular and they're devoted to their fans, but they want to know what you want to happen in the end. It's a weird. This one is actually a weird one because I think because. I think um, there are different things. Like, first of all, Gears of War, that first Gears of War was, like you said, was like a shot to the heart of a lot of gamers because we had never seen anything like that. Gears of War. Yeah, yeah, the first one came out, and it was like, kept, wow. Yeah. But, like, I agree with you, Seth. Like, a little bit. I, I think there is a little bit. It's it, it's not as linear as you think it is, but it's but it's not as, but it's not as you know, as free. Good, it's not as free as um, Mass Effect. I mean, like, you're, you're you can do like, more. Mass Effect. Kind of thing, so, but I'm not, I think I'm going to end up, you know what? Oh, man. I think I'm gonna give it to Seth because oh. I think the games were different. Like each game was different. Like and it had its own little kind of story. I mean, it still had the, uh, the Reapers, Reapers the but it was kind of different. And what first one was Sarah, and the second one. Was and you got to make your own decision, so you got to actually and that's interact the decisions. a little bit more. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Like, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that about. Uh, I mean, I like every that. decision. I like, had consequences. I'm like Seth. I do like Gears of War. I do like the combat, and that chainsaw gun was so oh, badass when I saw it. Most I was like, game. what the fuck is that? And I thought it was so awesome. Think. I, I actually weeped a little bit down that too, because because especially me because I didn't have the Mass Effect games. I played it with my friend, and now I had to play as Dom because he's the second character. So I played as Dom of the entire trilogy. So I think it was Dom the whole time. So when he died, I was like, I made a connection with this guy. This guy's playing as. Don't, don't give it to Seth. Though. Don't forget that most influential speech by, by Prescott in the beginning of Years of War Two. That's such a huge moment. That was it. it definitely that, that, was. That, that, that Do you remember the speech though for Mass Effect Three by by Hackett? Not was really. Like, yeah, because you didn't mean to play it, did you? I, I played Mass Effect, I beat it. Uh, I remember <laughs> that speech. That speech was awesome because they were facing it. an intergalactic threat. I don't know. I, I don't know. All right, you give it to me. Thank you very much. Last question. Oh, everything, because you tied it. If you would have got it, it would have been over. But... I'll never train it in a tie. Mm. No, I got a tiebreaker question. What is it? Better game. Fallout or Skyrim? I only played Fallout 4 and replaced Skyrim in my life. I think you, uh, uh, I think it would have been better if you had like added that maybe Skyrim with another game because mm-hmm. those are from the same universe. Or I mean, I'm from the same company. Oh uh, well, I know, but you know, that's a that's a debate for some people too. Okay, hold on, hold on. Shoot, man, I gotta freaking come up with another freaking question on the fly. That's not a question I had. Mm. We could just end it on time. I don't know. That's cheesy. That's cheesy. I agree. With Fuck you. it. Better character, Mario, Donkey Kong. Damn it! <laughs> uh, I picked Donkey Kong. I'm gonna go with Mario then. Damn it! Mario, cool. Mario, in a better character-wise, Mario is both are iconic. Both are around the same age, considering Mario and Donkey Kong both got their start in their same game. 
But I will say I like Mario. A b I will say Mario is a better character in terms of the fact that one, he's probably he's many times smarter than Donkey Kong. So Donkey Kong is kind of that's what makes Donkey Kong funny. <laughs> Not only that, Mario. I feel like he also has the, he has his chivalry, you know, with saving the princess. Where oh my God! Don no, Donkey Kong Mario, is, Mario is a psycho. Donkey Kong and is I have selfish. Th there are videos that prove that he's a psychopath. Donkey Kong is selfish. He hoards his bananas. Mario shares. No, he doesn't. He's a psycho. <laughs> Not, a, not only this, I just feel like... By the way, Mario's way older... He steps old. on his own Mario's Mario is <laughs> way older than you think. That's true. Mario's he fought, um, Donkey Kong's fucking granddad. That's not... Or his dad. Or one of those guys. That was Mario's dad. That Mario's, Mario's dad, dad, yeah. That was Jumpman. There's not much I can, <laughs> there's not much I can argue on. I just feel like in the stories of Donkey Kong and the stories of Mario, I just feel like whoever comes out as a better person or a better character in overall genuality, personality, and just... What's his personality? That's not Personality just and in just moves, anything you can say about a character, I just feel like Mario tops Donkey Kong in every single genre of All a right. character. All right, fine. All right, I'm going to say this. Mario's a fucking psychopath. <laughs> He well, is psycho. Would I step on your foot just for the fun of it? Yes. Maybe. Oh, I would not. I mean, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. All right, here's the Mario's a psycho, and there are plenty of, and there's plenty of provable theories that, that claim that Mario is a psycho. He steps on his own brother's foot in the Mario Tennis game. Mario Tennis. He steps on his own brother's foot. If, if Luigi wins, he steps on his foot for it. Mario's a psycho because, you know what's funny? Every block that you destroy in the old games is a member of the Mushroom Kingdom. So everyone you destroy, and Mario knows this, he destroys them. He's a psychopath. Oh, whoops. Well, screen with back. dark. Screen with dark. Screen with dark. Ah, screen with dark. Just let it go. Do it. Dang. He's still recording. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Donkey Kong, he's funny because he's dumb. He's funny because he's dumb. <laughs> but also, in a one-to-one -one fight, Donkey Kong will kick Mario's ass because he is way more. I mean, you heard that, uh, what um, the death battle said. Mar I mean, if Donkey Kong slaps the ground like that, he could cause an earthquake. Like, can Mario cause an earthquake by slapping the ground? No. Maybe he's a mushroom version. And actually, Donkey Kong does care. Even though he does hoard his bananas together, he does care about his family. He, he will defend his family from that villain, like the Crocodile King or whatever. Yeah, that that crack crack he's dude. a very primitive gorilla. Gorillas have a natural instinct. They have, they, but he protects, their, he protects their family. And he protects his island from that croc dude. Yeah. He will protect his island from that guy. He will do anything to protect him. One, because he's endangering his island and his family, and two, because he's stole bananas. You don't steal Donkey Kong's bananas. You don't do it. You don't take one of those damn bananas. You don't take one of those damn bananas. <laughs> but that's another thing. Is, I mean, like, Donkey Kong, you know, he's funny, and he's also very protective. I mean, like, if Donkey Kong's in the Mario universe, and he knew that every single one of those blocks was an actual person, he wouldn't destroy him. I don't know if he'd be smart enough to know that. Well, that's the table. That's the table. That's the table. <laughs> or that's the and also, like I said, Mar I mean, you know, Donkey Kong versus Mario. Mario's a psychopath. Donkey Kong actually does give a shit about his family, and he cares. I don't know of that whole point about Donkey Kong because, but you know, all those freaking weird things Mario has, especially that one thing that makes him pretty much indestructible. What the star? Yeah, that makes him pretty much god. -like. Thing, those are items. Those are temporary. Mm -hmm. Donkey Kong's strength is forever, and that's he's true. got Diddy. That's true. That's he's true. got Diddy, who's got all the technology. He's got all the other Kongs that have their own unique abilities. I don't know. I mean, who's Mario have? Luigi, who's basically a carbon copy, but he's Luigi is Luigi has got a bunch of friends. Luigi is not a carbon copy. Luigi is underrated. But that's not gonna show me any direction. So what's the what's the verdict? All right, what's the verdict, dude? Who, who do you give it to? Mm. I, I mean, I probably gave it to Mark because you kept saying he's a psychopath, and you kept saying, "I know, I know, I know where you're coming from." But that's not really they're, they're not writing him to be a real psychopath. Like that's not where his character is in being a psychopath. Kind of that way. Stop it! I mean, if you, it's like one of those video game videos. Like when you look at it on the outside, you're like, "He's crazy," but when you're playing the game, you're like, "You're not thinking." I don't remember freaking playing Super Mario going. I definitely remember playing Donkey Kong going, God, he's stupid. He's <laughs> really stupid. Damn it. Mark, you get the victory, man. The victory. I thought I'd win this. You got it. Hey, you won the Super Superhero one. Damn it. Now we're tied. <laughs> if I compete in the anime one, I'm not going to have It'd be unfair. So I got to write, write <laughs> No, we're not doing anime because I wouldn't win. I would, I would destroy him. That we all know that. Let's skip anime. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us on this nerd war. Seth lost this one, and he's gonna be just okay about it because he won the superhero version. Mark, you are the winner. Thank Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Good sportsmanship. Yeah. And we will. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank Subscribe, you. like, do what you gotta do. Please support us. It really helps us out. And if you and and if you want to see more of us in the future, and we will see you.
on the next one. Goodbye.